Welcome to Maintenance Phase, the podcast that is low in intellectual nutrition, but only because the serving size is small. (laughs) How's that? I like it. Been working on that for days. I am Michael Hobbs. I'm a reporter for the Huffington Post. I'm Aubrey Gordon. I am a writer, author, and fat lady about town. And we're so thrilled to be back. Yes. Back for good is the plan. Mm -hmm. So look for us every other Tuesday in your podcast Mm -hmm. feed. Yay! Doing it. Folks have also asked us about how they can support the show. And we are happy to announce that we have a Patreon. Yes, we are millennials. And upon birth, everyone is given a Patreon. (laughs) Yeah, it is patreon.com slash maintenance phase. And it's linked on our um, website at maintenancephase.com. Yes, we are finally providing a way for listeners to support us and a way for Aubrey to pay off her gambling debts. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's right. So a bunch of folks also asked about t-shirts. Um, I think the number one request is for Methodology Queen shirts. Yes. I'm so happy to say we have Methodology Queen shirts. Those are all at T Public. It's all linked directly again from our website, which is maintenancephase.com. We went with T Public because they had the largest size range that we could find in the sort of print to order world. Many of their designs go up to Hanes 5X. If folks are aware of other places that have larger size ranges that are still print to order, let us know. And we know that times are tough and weird. And if supporting us isn't right for you right now, or you just don't want to, all of that is totally fine. We're not going to talk about it on the show a ton. We're not going to make it weird. Yes, we're here. If you want to toss us some money, great. And if you don't, totally no sweat. You know what that reminds me of, Aubrey? It reminds me of our thoughts on eating ice cream. If you want to eat it, (laughs) eat it. If you don't, don't. I'm transitioning into the core content of this episode. Seamless. So what are we talking about today? So we are talking about a diet food product that is very popular right the hell now, Mm -hmm. and that is Halo Top ice cream. Do you know what I think is the fundamental difference between us? What is that, Michael? I am not on Instagram. (laughs) I know that Halo Top is a thing, I guess, because I hear people refer to it, but I have not been privy to any of the sort of Halo Top hype in the wild. Mm. The diet hype train goes through Instagram now. Like, that's what Instagram is. Yes. I I think before we get into Halo Top, it's worth saying, this is not a Halo Top ruiner episode. (laughs) Just so people know. If you like your Halo Top, you can keep your Halo Top in the (laughs) parlance of the Affordable Care Act. (laughs) And if you're under 26, you can stay on your parents' Halo Top. (laughs) Halo Top is kind of an encapsulation of contemporary diet foods and attitudes toward dieting. Ooh, okay. And as a window into our cultures around disordered eating, and particularly disordered eating in men. Oh, I mean, I'm disappointed that you're not just going to describe ice cream to me for an hour. Sorry. I'll come along for the sociological dissection of <laughs> trends that are encapsulated by Halo Top. It's fine. So you have, have you tried Halo Top at all? No. Okay. I had never even heard of it before you said you wanted to do an episode on it. What? Yeah, I had to Google it. Oh my God. It was in 2017, not only the most popular ice cream in the US, but the most popular packaged food in the US. What? Uh Uh-huh. No way. So here's how Halo Top describes itself. This is from their website. Halo Top is a light ice cream that actually tastes like ice cream, which sounds silly. But when Halo Top first found its way into grocery store freezers, boasting fewer calories, less sugar, and higher protein than traditional ice cream, it became the first of its kind and created an entirely new category in ice cream. But we'll back up a second. Why did we want to make a light ice cream that tastes like ice cream? Well, it's pretty simple. We like ice cream so much that we wanted to eat it more. So we created delicious, creamy, light ice cream that's 280 to 380 calories per pint. So we could do just that. Oh, we're doing snack wells again. This is like the next bullet in my notes is just like, it's the 2010s answer to snack wells. Right. I would also say they're saying that they created something totally new in a light ice cream. Light ice cream is absolutely not anything totally new. Skinny Cow was a big deal in the 90s. It was sort of a low-fat 
ice cream, low fat, low calorie. And a staple of the Hobbes household. Oh. Because as I mentioned, my mom was a constant dieter. So all I ever ate growing up was low fat and no fat ice cream. Totally. Same in the Gordon household. It was not good. (laughs) It was only as an adult that I was like, oh, ice cream's actually like rich and creamy and nice. So Skinny Cow was low fat. Briars launched Carb Smart in the 2000s. <laughs> carb Smart was low carb, and Halo Top is attempting to do both. Oh, okay. It really plays into this sort of deep desire and this refrain that we hear a lot about dieting, certainly in the US and certainly in the like 90s and 2000s, which is eat whatever you want and stay thin. So, what is the origin of this weird brand? So, Halo Top was founded in 2012 by two attorneys, actually, Justin Wolverton and Doug Boughton or Booten. I'm not sure how you say it. Mm-hmm. Justin Wolverton, who is the guy who came up with the recipe, he was sort of miserable practicing law. He spent a lot of time sort of like, looking for joy elsewhere. He tried stand-up comedy. He spent a lot of time writing, like, spec scripts. He wrote a spec script for The League. What? <laughs> There's just a lot of, like, straight dudeness. This is becoming, like, the first 25 minutes of The Joker. <laughs> Where is the story going, Audrey? <laughs> Hang on. I'm gonna um, pull up a picture of Ooh. him and send it to you, okay. because that's where it gets out of Joker territory, is when you see this actual dude and you're like, oh, no, no, no. I hope he's not hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, I what I see when I sort of see this dude is I'm like, oh, you look like a uh, like a tech bro kind of look. Yeah, he looks like he's like in his late 30s, but then he has the haircut of like a 17 year old. Yeah, he one of his sort of like number one kind of hobbies is intermittent fasting, avoiding sugar and carbs, quote, He'd regularly skip all food until 4 p.m. and then ingest two high-protein entrees, such as a chicken burrito bowl from Chipotle and a pork shoulder omelet. Okay. He felt this kept his mind sharp and his beach body taut. Okay. So this is what is, I think, popularly referred to as biohacking. Yes. For folks who are sort of unfamiliar with the concept of biohacking... There are some folks who refer to it as DIY biology, which is sort of a horrifying concept to me. God, just call it a fucking diet. They don't want to call it a diet because like diets are associated with women. Right. That's exactly it. Vox has a great explainer on biohacking. They define it as, quote, the attempt to manipulate your brain and body in order to optimize performance outside the realm of traditional medicine. The idea is that you are experimenting with your own body And you are sort of taking down the data of like, how does this thing make you feel? Oh my god. A huge portion of this sort of like, quote unquote, biohacking world is around food restriction. It's all fine. Like, technically, this stuff is fine. If you like to eat chipotle omelets, like have a chipotle omelet, it sounds totally fine. I just, uh, I just hate the like pseudoscientific approach of this and the sort of weird universalizing that always comes along with this. Absolutely. Like, there's nothing necessarily wrong or bad about this, except that I really do think there are many cases where this is cloaking an eating disorder. Yeah. It's also wrapped up in this bullshit culture of overproductivity. Mm-hmm. I mean, so much of this is about having energy so that, like, you can stay up late all night coding and, like, you can have energy to work. Absolutely. Biohacking is also what got us things like bulletproof coffee, where you, like, <laughs> stir butter into your coffee, right? And it's, like, eight bucks. Yeah. And neither coffee nor butter are expensive. And yet, together, they're, like, really expensive. And I don't know why. Vox <laughs> also has this great quote about biohacking that feels like it sort of encapsulates a bunch of stuff. Quote, What differentiates biohacking is arguably not that it's a different genre of activity, but that the activities are undertaken with a particular mindset. The underlying philosophy is that we don't need to accept our body's shortcomings. We can engineer our way past them using a range of high and low tech solutions. And when somebody else talks about their experience of chronic illness or fatigue, I can write a very long email to them telling them, have you tried biohacking, miss? Because I have about four pages of weird blocky text that I need you to read. Yeah, that's right. In addition to being sort of like 2010s snack wells, 
This sort of biohacking stuff is sort of the straight men's equivalent of what we talked about with moon juice, Mm. which is sort of the idea that there's something amorphous that's just not right with your body. Right. And if you just eat the right things or do them in the right order or at the right time, you can and will feel like you're in sort of this optimal state and a bunch of other things about your life will fall into place. Right. right? It's also very Silicon Valley in that it's very apolitical. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the biohacking rhetoric about sort of the foods that we subsidize, prices, subsidies, food stamps, all of the other systems and political decisions that go into the kind of food that makes it onto our shelves. It's fundamentally creating a two-tiered food system where it's like the good stuff, quote unquote, is available to people who can afford it. 100% also. Halo Top is in no way a tech company, but it has very techy vibes. Oh, yeah. They have 75 employees. Everybody works from home. They all chat on Slack, and if they need to meet, they are members of WeWork, which, like, of course they're members of WeWork. I know. There had to be a WeWork cameo in this episode. They also, like, Justin Wolverton also talks about how, like, he starts his day at 1030 and only works in three-hour blasts. (laughs) Is how it's described in this piece. It's high intensity interval training for working. It's intermittent fasting of work. Yeah. I also feel like WeWork is such a perfect metaphor for this because WeWork's entire business model is literally just renting out an entire building and then subcontracting out that building in sort of little tiny units, right? You rent out one cubicle at a time. Yeah. And yet WeWork sells itself as some sort of tech company or some sort of innovator when it's doing this extremely traditional business thing. And I feel like it's kind of the same with Halo Top, where they're like selling themselves as like this innovative, unprecedented thing. And it's literally just like, it's a diet food, man. Yeah, totally. And I think it's worth knowing that Halo Top is also like, there's a ton of business journalism around Halo Top because it has this sort of rags to riches story. Oh. That is this guy, Justin Wolverton, came up with this recipe using a $20 ice cream maker from Amazon. He came up with it in his house. And when he came up with it and sort of when he started the company, he just two years before their biggest year in 2017, they were, as they say, sort of on the verge of collapse. They had massive debt. Oh. And what ended up happening is that they fundraised from family and friends, right? Ah! Which is like, <laughs> tell me, tell me. I was just going to say, every single business rags to riches story goes through, I got money from my parents and my friends. Yeah. Every single one. Yeah. They raised like, <laughs> I think it's like a million dollars from like family and friends. Like they raised sort of an astronomical amount, and which makes sense, right? Like they're both coming from very high end law firms. Yes. Whenever you hear one of these, we started our business in our garage stories, control F for parents. <laughs> Intergenerational wealth is the key to understanding these stories. Yeah. What ends up happening is that Halo Top redesigns its packaging. Halo Top looks very like its packaging is very sort of like millennial-y. Yes. And one of the most prominent features on that packaging is in the middle, there's a giant outline of an ice cream scoop that includes the calorie count for the entire pint. Oh, right. It is the largest print on the entire package. It's larger than the name. It's larger than the flavor. Right. Underneath the lid, it also has sort of that foil on top that's often on those sort of like premium ice cream pints, right? Theirs has slogans that say things like guilt-free zone. Oh, no. Or stop when you hit the bottom. Oh. That's also sort of part of the Halo Top mystique, right? Is that there's all this stuff about it sort of implies a loss of control around food and then celebrates that loss of control. When the only correct thing to have on the bottom of the lid is to do it like the Snapple container and have fun facts. Oh my god, I would love it. The seahorse is the only animal where the male gets pregnant. That's right. That's what you need, seahorse (laughs) facts. So in addition to sort of billing itself as low calorie, it is also a very low sugar ice cream. Mm -hmm. It uses two sort of sweeteners, primarily stevia, which is like a a plant. Natural. It's natural. It's natural. It's plant-based. It's whatever. Yes. And it uses erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. It's a byproduct of fermenting starches and yeast. I've never even heard of this. Erythritol and xylitol and all of these different sugar alcohols 
show up a lot in keto diets. Oh, really? Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because they're ways to get some level of sweetness without without sugar. Oh. Regular consumption of erythritol has been linked to weight gain. Paradoxically. It can also cause headaches and diarrhea. It's also very interesting because part of the whole biohacking thing is rejecting, quote unquote, traditional medicine, Western medicine, however they're framing it. And yet Mm -hmm. it includes all of these ingredients that are like extremely technological. Mm -hmm. There's this weird dichotomy in these sorts of diet foods where it's always presented as natural, but they always include all of these unnatural, like very scientific-y ingredients. Right. And it's like, which one do you want, man? You're not picking some erythritol off of an erythritol tree. Right. (laughs) So there's also like a number of nutrition professors weighed in and a number of the pieces that I read. One from NYU had this to say about both erythritol and stevia and sort of like artificial sweeteners. Mm -hmm. Since sweet taste is normally a signal to our bodies that the food product contains calories, Some researchers have hypothesized that eating a sweet product that is calorie-free may result in appetite dysregulation and unfavorable metabolic responses. Snack wells. Yeah. You eat a bunch of this diet food because you think it will satisfy you and because you think it's low calorie and it doesn't satisfy you. It sort of messes up your appetite and may also mess up your metabolism to a degree, right? you're not necessarily any better off than when you started. Right. And it's overlooking what we actually need to be healthy, which is adaptogens. (laughs) Guys. I genuinely didn't see that one coming, and it was a real delight. I was mid-sip of water. (laughs) I was trying to get a little Aubrey giggle out of you. That was was goal-oriented behavior. (laughs) I like it. I like it. So in addition to marketing itself around sort of calories and sugar content, Halo Top has this sort of claim to fame that is being a high protein ice cream. Oh. A lot of diet foods that are marketed toward men are marketed under the guise of being high protein. Dude, yes. I I feel like it's all based on this myth that somehow like men are not getting enough protein when like most men are already getting twice the daily recommended amount of protein. Like, there's no lack of protein in the American diet, but we've been told over and over again that we need to be eating as much protein as humanly possible. The sort of, like, er example that I have, right? Like, the archetypal, like, dude and protein thing that I'm aware of. There is an absolute nightmare of a dude who's, like, truly horrific on Bachelor in Paradise, which is one of the Bachelor spinoffs. His name is genuinely Chad. (laughs) Bachelor in Paradise is filmed on a beach in Mexico, and he brought a suitcase of clothes and a whole other suitcase of protein. No way. What, just like jars of peanut butter or whatever? It was protein powders, but it was mostly just lunch meat. (laughs) (laughs) He just brought a suitcase full of, like, sliced turkey. That's so sad. It's so sad. He's being the opposite of a Chad. (laughs) He's being, like, kind of a beta right now. Anyway, as it turns out, Halo Top has the same amount of protein as any other ice cream. (laughs) Milk has a sort of standard amount of protein. You can't increase or decrease that. And other ice creams aren't marketing themselves as sources of protein. They're marketing themselves as ice creams. That's like the yogurt that advertises itself as gluten-free. That's right. The co-founders of Halo Top are aware that they have the same sort of protein profile as other ice creams. And Doug Booten said, quote, Nobody's going to eat 1,200 calories of Ben & Jerry's for the 20 grams of protein. We've maintained the protein while bringing the calories and sugar down. Ice cream has milk and milk has protein. We don't add protein powder. It's from milk, eggs, and cream, just like Ben and Jerry's. Okay. The other thing that they do add to Halo Top is fiber. Oh. They add prebiotic fiber is how they sort of bill it on the ingredients list. What the fuck does that mean, Aubrey? <laughs> it's It truly is a kind of fiber. Prebiotic? Prebiotic. So there are probiotics, right, which are the actual bacteria that folks are trying to add to their gut. Right. Prebiotics are fruits and vegetables and whole grains. What? They're the things that feed good bacteria in your gut. Oh, it just means it's bacteria food? Yeah. There's like making up a scientific sounding term for just like every banana you've ever eaten. It is found in chicory root, which is where many of these sort of low carb foods actually get theirs. So a lot of low carb foods 
are a little bit lower in carbs, but they pump in a bunch of fiber, which is a carbohydrate. But in diets, people subtract the fiber from the overall carb count. Oh, okay. So, so they talk about net carbs, and oh. net carbs means total carbohydrates minus the number of grams of fiber. Oh my god. So it's sort of like, it doesn't really count, even though it's totally a carbohydrate. This is also very Silicon Valley in that there's this drive toward quantification, mm-hmm. but then food manufacturers also know about the quantification rubrics that you're using, and so they can very easily game that system. Uh-huh. So you can pump in a bunch of fiber, and they know that that's going to be subtracted from the carb count. Right. So it's going to make it seem as if this is sort of carb-friendly, when it seems like they're just sort of like juking the stats a little bit. A little bit. The other like real secret ingredient <laughs> in Halo Top is air. Oh. What, so they're whipping the cream? Yeah, so all ice cream gets churned and gets some air churned into it. It's part mm-hmm. of the reason that it's sort of light and fluffy and you get that kind of ice cream scoop texture. Yeah. Each pint of Halo Top, two cups of ice cream, right, is three quarters of a cup of air. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So if you let Halo Top melt, you will have like, you know, a little more than half a pint. I mean, the pint that I bought is light. I did yeah. notice that when I was putting it in my backpack. This feels like it has a stuffed animal in it or something. It doesn't feel like it's full of liquid. Absolutely. So the average Halo Top pint weighs 256 grams. Uh Uh-huh. And the average Ben & Jerry's pint weighs 428 grams. Oh, wow. So almost double. Yes. It's really a significant difference. I mean, I'm not going to talk shit on foods that are mostly air because that's meringue erasure. Yeah, souffles. Oh, yeah. I'm pro-souffle. So a number of dietitians um, were quoted in a lot of the stories that I read about Halo Top. Basically, their whole thing was like, it's only healthier if you eat a regular serving size. So it's only comparable to other ice creams on volume terms. Right. That's exactly right. The nutrition facts and sort of the calorie count and fat and all of that kind of stuff for a whole pint of Halo Top really is comparable to like a single serving of existing ice cream. So even if you are counting calories and fat and carbs and all of that kind of stuff, You really could just have a scoop of ice cream. But that's not biohacking, Aubrey. That's just like eating food. I will say Halo Top is actually like a more accessible option for people who are diabetic. Like if you can't eat sugar, having a low sugar ice cream is like probably your shot at having ice, having more than one spoonful of ice cream. Right. So there are uses for it, like almost any diet food right? It ends up creating more accessible foods for people with chronic illnesses, Mm -hmm. when we should probably actually just be creating foods for people with chronic illnesses without being like, and it'll make you thin and you can eat a whole pint and blah, 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 right? Like, these are not bad products in and of themselves necessarily, but they're contributing to really weird cultural attitudes. Right. Okay, so before we get into the next part, let's actually just taste some Halo Top. Thank you. You got some Halo Top, yeah? Yes. Okay. I was specifically instructed by my co-host to (laughs) get the peanut chunk something something flavor, but then my local Walgreens did not have that and only had salted caramel. Oh, great. That is what I have in front of me. God, the fucking ingredients list. It's like the paragraph of a Jonathan Franzen novel. It's massive. (laughs) Here are the ingredients in vanilla Halo Top. You ready? Give it to me. Skim milk, eggs, erythritol, prebiotic fiber, milk protein concentrate, Mm. cream, organic cane sugar, vegetable glycerin, organic carob gum. Oh, no. Carob. (laughs) Our old nemesis. (laughs) Organic guar gum and uh, organic stevia leaf extract. Okay. Meanwhile, vanilla Haagen-Dazs is cream, skim milk, cane sugar, egg yolks, vanilla. Ice cream stuff. Yeah, ice cream stuff. So I got peanut butter cup because it is the most popular flavor in the U.S. The good news is you got salted caramel, which I believe is the most popular flavor in the U.K. I feel deep solidarity with our British listeners right now. (laughs) All right. You ready? All right. Here we go. Let's go. God damn it. It's pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm livid. (laughs) i mean i think it's fine it's pretty convincingly salted caramel flavor yeah although it does sort of have the texture of like a sorbet like it doesn't have the sort of dense rich creaminess of a uh of a real ice cream totally so i will say as someone who makes ice cream at home from time to time oh you are a white woman in your 30s in portland (laughs) (laughs) Mm, one of the hardest things about making ice cream is 
making sure that it doesn't crystallize. Oh, yeah. They seem to have done a pretty good job avoiding crystallizing. Yeah. I would not say that if I were in the mood for ice cream, I wouldn't be like, ooh, somebody give me some Halo Top. Yeah, me either. But I wouldn't necessarily turn it down. I'm eating more because I can't stop and I have to get to the bottom of the thingy. <laughs> You're following instructions. I think if I was like at a party at somebody's house or something and somebody gave me just like a bowl with a spoon and this ice cream, I think I would eat it, but I would also think that there was like something off about it. Yeah, it doesn't taste like Tillamook ice cream or Ben and Jerry's or whatever. Right. But it doesn't taste bad. I think what we're deciding now is that the rest of this episode is just going to be us finishing the pint and it's just going to be <laughs> ASMR. Just quiet mouth sounds and us mm. not speaking. Wait, what does your um, underneath the lid say? Mine says, you had me at Halo. Oh, that's actually pretty good. God damn it. Yeah, it's cute. Mine says, I love to love you, baby, or something. What? I threw it away already, but it was something okay. along those lines. It, it definitely wasn't like a pro binge eating, like, come see my bottom message. Come see my bottom. That was actually pretty good. I should be pitching this to the Halo Top people. You genuinely should. You know what it really needs? It needs some fucking nuts. Like, it needs something to balance out the treacly over sweetness of it because it's basically just like air and sugar. Yeah. But then you can't add nuts to it because that adds a ton of fat and a ton of calories. And fiber that is not necessarily prebiotic. God damn it. <laughs> this postbiotic fiber. <laughs> fucking bullshit ass fiber. Okay, so here's where it gets fun. Ooh, Are you ready? Give me fun. The reason that Halo Top got as popular as it did mm -hmm. is that there was an immensely popular piece in GQ magazine in January of 2016. Okay. It was written by a guy named Shane Snow, who's another dude who seems very focused on this kind of biohacking stuff. Like he takes his measurements every day okay. and weighs himself every day and calculates <laughs> his own body fat. He was talking to his super ripped trainer in LA mm. who started telling him about Halo Top, this ice cream that he'd been eating that was like healthy ice cream. This writer, Shane Snow, starts sort of doing the math in his head and says, oh my god, I could actually get to my protein goals per day if I only ate Halo Top. <laughs> Wait, only ate Halo Top like ice cream or like only ate Halo Top like three meals a day? More than three meals a day, as we will get into. What? So he creates what he calls the Halo Top diet. What? He subsists exclusively on Halo Top for 10 days. Shut up, Aubrey, no. I told you this is where it gets fun. Uh. So he says in his piece for GQ, he says, quote, For 10 days, I would do what surely a number of homo sapiens, primarily World of Warcraft addicts, have done before, but never in the name of research, and certainly never with the hopes of getting skinnier. I'd be eating nothing but ice cream. Uh, okay. Which also, like, I don't know what people who play World of Warcraft ever did to this dude. Yeah, let's leave the World of Warcraft. They're not fucking with anybody. Those people are nice. I know those people. So, perhaps unsurprisingly, within a few days, he starts to experience some pretty profound side effects because he's only eating fucking ice cream. <laughs> he uh, has these oh. lingering headaches, sort of constantly. They're ice cream headaches. Are we sure they're not ice cream headaches? <laughs> no, they're not ice cream headaches. They're like, you haven't been eating real food headaches. Mm -hmm. He also gets a really big canker sore that keeps getting bigger and bigger. Oh my god. He talks about being constantly shivering. He lives in Los Angeles. Constantly shivering. Well, don't eat cold stuff all the time. He figures out that he needs to eat a pint of ice cream every two to three hours to keep from having a headache. <laughs> <sighs> Why do people do this? It's like those videos on YouTube where people just set these absurd challenges for themselves. They're like, can I beat Super Mario Brothers with my feet? And it's like, why would you want to do that? Right. Totally. Why would you want to do that? Yes. And the problem here isn't that it's ice cream. The problem is that he's only eating one food. Yeah. Even if you were eating something quote unquote healthy, if you were only eating kale for 10 days, you'd also have weird side effects because that's not how humans are supposed to live. Yes. Here's a, actually a quote that I was like, oh, Lord. Mm. He keeps a food diary of this whole 10 days, right? Of course. At 9.30 p.m., I headed over to a lady friend's house, reluctantly carrying the ice cream cooler pack with quote unquote breakfast. I remembered a story a friend told me about a guy she went out with. He was training for a bodybuilding contest and busted out a can of tuna fish every two hours. Nice. At least I wasn't the tuna fish guy. Well, what's the difference, bro? You're the ice cream guy. Yeah. Bro. It's such a good metaphor for the reasons why fad diets don't work is because any fad diet 
that requires you to bring a fucking cooler over to the person's (laughs) house when you're going to go get laid is not a sustainable plan. You can't just expect to have a cooler with you at all times for the rest of your life. So partway through the Halo Top diet, this guy consults two nutritionists. They say that his canker sore that keeps getting bigger is probably due to a vitamin C deficiency because you're not getting vitamin C. So he's getting scurvy. (laughs) Yeah. They want to know whether or not he's caught a cold yet because cutting calories this significantly often weakens your immune system. They did say that they were pleasantly surprised that he wasn't experiencing more sort of gastrointestinal distress, particularly that he hadn't had diarrhea because of the volume of erythritol. So on the underside of the lid on Halo Top, it should say surprisingly little diarrhea. (laughs) There is something, okay... This is unfair, but there's something so fucking male about this idea of finding out about something that you didn't know about before, and this thing is healthy, and it's good, and you're excited about it, and then eating only that thing. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to just be like, well, sometimes I like ice cream, so next time I buy ice cream, I'm going to try this Halo Top stuff. No, no, no. It's like, this is good for me, therefore it must be good for me if I only eat this thing. I mean, it's just deranged thinking. Right. It's also There's also something sort of childlike about it. Yes. So at the end of the Halo Top diet, here is how he sort of closes it out. Quote, after 50 straight pints of ice cream... I clocked in at 143.5 pounds, down 9.9 pounds, and 12% body fat, down 3%. Oh my god. I'd lost some water weight, but no discernible muscle mass. I'd added half an inch of muscle to my chest and slimmed my waist. My canker sore was still massive, and I had a cold. (laughs) He also talks throughout this where he's like, a friend of mine ate a hot dog, and I thought about murder. (laughs) Oh my god. It's like pretty... Like, he does a good job of being like, this is not a good experience. But I'm like, then why are you writing about it, though, my guy? Yeah, exactly. Then why should we publish this? And you know that people are going to take the message from this, hey, look at this miracle ass ice cream. Yes. The trick with all of this stuff and with all of these sort of fad diets is that folks will then go out and evangelize the diet that they're on, right? This is part of the sort of cycle of dieting, right? Yeah. You lose weight quickly on a pretty drastic diet. You go out and start recommending it to people. They also don't necessarily do the math on, like, it took me 10 days to lose 9 pounds and I felt like shit the whole time. (laughs) Right? (laughs) So they're also just recommending, like, you too can shiver and be mean to people and have a giant canker sore and a headache all the time. And keep a fucking cooler with you at all times, which I'm sure is very easy to incorporate into your busy life. (laughs) Super sustainable. They also, does he say anything about what happens to him once he goes back to a normal ass diet? He probably just gains all the weight back. Uh, He does not say. I think this is a a short term project but he does say as soon as he's off the diet he's like i just wanted to eat eggs and spinach and i was like i get that this is the thing with fad diets is fad diets work as long as you are on them yeah and then once you go off of them guess what you're on a new diet now and then you have a new body to go with it totally and also i think like look man if you're trying to lose more than five to ten pounds Even if you match the pace of a diet like this, Mm -hmm. someone like me would have to eat nothing but ice cream and be like a mean canker sore monster for Mm -hmm. like nine to ten months straight. (laughs) Right? I would have to have – it would be like my year of eating ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. But think of how much weight you would lose when they have to cut off your gangrenous foot from having scurvy for seven months. (laughs) I remember after Super Size Me came out, which is a movie that we have to do an episode on, Mm -hmm. some nutrition professor went on the like Twinkies and Doritos diet where Mm -hmm. he literally just ate like the, the worst imaginable processed food for 30 days and he lost weight. Because he just – he restricted his calories. So he would right. only eat like 1,500 calories a day. But it was all just shit food and he ended up losing weight. And it's like, yes, any diet where you're just restricting the number of calories you're taking in per day, you're going to lose weight on it. So he could have done this with anything. Yeah, totally. This entire experiment says nothing about Halo Top. So here's where it gets a little dark again. The canker sore eventually ate him alive. <laughs> <laughs> No, the darkness is that a bunch of media outlets replicate this. Wait, what? Yeah, so Yahoo News does the Halo Top Diet, uh, Spoon University, which is sort of like a food website for college kids. Wait, what? Instead of pointing out how trash this entire endeavor was, they decided to do it themselves? Mm -hmm. Even for 
online journalism. That's shocking. So each of these pieces talks quite a bit about the side effects, but the closing of all of these pieces is like, but I lost a lot of weight. Oh my God. They're all like, pretty amazing how much weight I lost. It's, this is, uh, this is 99% the fault of the fucking editors, as usual. Writers pitch pieces, it's fine. People do odd experiments with their bodies, it's fine. But the fact that somebody working at these like pretty major nationwide publications can't see a pitch like this and just be like, oh, it's a fad diet. We publish a million articles like this. We've gone through a million fad diet cycles by now. We're not going to publish this because it's not very responsible. And the headlines for these are all like, there's a new diet. I tried this new diet and I lost this amount of weight, right? Like they're all sort of like enticing you into this is a good idea. As all of this press around the Halo Top diet, quote unquote, ramps up, so do the sales of Halo Top. I'm sure, yeah. It becomes a big enough deal that their chief operating officer, Doug, who's one of the co-founders, makes a statement about it and is just like, hey, don't do this. Okay, that's like a vague, that's vaguely responsible. But at the same time, so like Doug is saying, don't do this, we don't recommend it. Justin, on the other side, is saying, actually, we had this really fun GQ article come out. Oh, no. (laughs) And it sort of was really key to the brand's success in sort of how he talks about it. Uh... Both of them talk about eating ice cream for breakfast most days. What? Yes. So they're talking about this not as a dessert substitute, but they're just like, sometimes you can just eat it for a meal. I don't know. I don't necessarily object to these dudes. I don't necessarily object to the existence of this product. I do strenuously object to promoting it as a diet or as a diet food. Right. And I think the biggest thing is, and this is where they've gotten sort of knocked publicly the most, is that advertising ice cream as you're going to eat the whole pint of this is really hard to think of that as doing anything other than normalizing or promoting or reaching out to specifically marketing to people with issues with binge eating. When they have been sort of called out on this binge eating disorder thing, Justin Wolverton sort of issued a response uh, in one of the pieces that I read. And here's what he had to say, quote, everybody has their own definition of healthy. For us, it means foods that are as unprocessed as they can be. Halo Top is something where people can eat the whole pint or a lot more than a quarter of a cup of ice cream. Wait, listen to this motherfucker that just said unprocessed. Right. W- read the fucking ingredients again. Carob gum, guar gum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What definition of unprocessed allows for all these ingredients that I've never fucking heard of? And I'm a weirdo that like reads about this shit all the time. Yeah, totally. It just doesn't hold any water at all. Yeah. Because holding water requires processing, Aubrey. You have to process things to hold water. <laughs> According to the co-founders... They estimate within Halo Top that their customers are eating between five and ten pints of Halo Top per week. Mm -hmm. Their success isn't necessarily that everybody under the sun loves Halo Top. Their success is the people who love Halo Top buy way the fuck more Halo Top than any other brand of ice cream that they would get. I mean, it reminds me a lot of the alcohol industry where we all see beer ads everywhere. And this is idea of sort of having a beer with friends. But 60% of alcohol is consumed by 10% of the customers. Mm -hmm. Fast food, I believe, has the same structure where there's what are called heavy users, people that are eating a lot of fast food, and that's actually the majority of the market. Mm. I mean, I don't want to shame anybody that eats a pint of ice cream because sometimes you need to eat a pint of ice cream. But also it seems like the company is taking on the same structure as these other industries. Yeah, this doesn't get from me a full-throated, like, this is fucked up and these guys need to be stopped. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel that way about it. But it does not sit well with me. Mm -hmm. Slate ran a piece about Halo Top. And this quote, I thought, really sort of encapsulated the ways in which the line gets blurred between dieting and disordered eating. Mm. All any dieting person really wants, and I am extrapolating from personal experience here, is to eat a whole container of something. Preferably that thing will taste good or at least not bad, but what's crucial in the end is getting to eat all of it. What Halo Top does so brilliantly is tap into Americans' love of binging. This writer goes on to say that she doesn't blame the creators of Halo Top for that love of binging, and I'm like, no, of course you can't pin it all on these two guys, but it doesn't seem, frankly, very ethical to me. Mm. The last piece that I want to talk about 
in terms of Halo Tops marketing is its most recent ad campaign from I think last year. Mm-hmm. The title of that ad campaign is Stop Shooting Yourself. Oh no. S H O U L D. I like know where this is going. It's so dark. <laughs> Tell me where you think it's going. It's going to be pretending to free you from diet talk when it's actually just another form of diet talk. I mean, you just nailed it. Damn it. (laughs) I'm spoiling your episode. I'm sorry. You were going to lead me there by the hand and I ran in front of you. (laughs) No, no, no. It's perfect because you really can kind of see it coming a mile away. Yeah. This is their quote from their Stop Shooting Yourself website. Oh, no. So the ad is essentially, it's a 30 second spot. It is a plus size woman dancing in her bra and panties. I'm with you so far. Um, And while she's dancing around, there are these slogans that pop up on screen that say, I should work out more. I should eat more salads. And I should skip dessert. And she is eating Halo Top. Oh, man. At the end of the ad, she sees that one of her neighbors is looking in through her apartment window. And she's just like, whatever, I'm going to keep dancing, right? It's just sort of like, I'm going to be free and easy and I'm going to live my life. Here we go. Yeah. So the idea here that this ad seems to be sort of like playing into is what a lot, a lot, a lot of diet companies and diet food companies are doing, which is sort of like, it's okay to be fat. So buy this ice cream that will make you thin. Yeah. It's so gross to be using this stuff to sell people fucking ice cream. It's so gross. Because essentially, like, if you look at the sort of track of what's happening here, like, Fat activists and eating disorder advocates have done a shit ton of work to make sure that people understand that dieting is not a sustainable way of being, that it doesn't actually lead people to lose weight, that it fucks up your physical and mental health. And essentially what is happening right now culturally is that all of that stuff, like dieting is just getting a search and replace for like, it's not about dieting, it's about wellness And it's not about restriction, it's about empowerment so that you can restrict if you choose to restrict, right? What is the purpose of eating Halo Top if not to lose weight? Right, totally. It's not like calories and carbs taste bad and you want to avoid them for that reason. So it's like you're telling this woman to lose weight while you're being like, you're fine as you are. It's so fucking cynical. And this is also a place where people are like, look, the culture around food is changing. The culture around fatness is changing. And again... What they're talking about isn't concrete experiences of fat people or of people with eating disorders or people who experience a lot of food policing for any number of reasons. What they're talking about is ad campaigns. Right. That feels like there's more acceptance. And I would argue that means that there's more explicit policing of fat people, not that there is more acceptance of fatness and fat people. Right. If only she ate Halo Top, she wouldn't be so fat. <laughs> totally. Right? I mean, that's what, that's the message people are going to get. And she and she is eating Halo Top, so she's on her way. She's doing right. the right thing. She's becoming thin. You know what it reminds me of? Mm. The ridiculous cynicism of those, what was it, Winston ads that were like, you've come a long way, baby. <gasps> totally. It was like, we're feminists. And like, look at how great we are with women's rights. Hey, here's a stick that's going to kill you. Use this. <laughs> it's like just immediately sucking up feminism into the fucking tractor beam of capitalism yeah using this like genuine advancement of women to do it and it's exactly the same here it's like body positivity is great look how happy you are with yourself take this thing that's going to make you different totally also fuck them the whole thing came out of this biohacking intermittent fasting i'm gonna tweak my body thing like halo top is another should i should be eating halo top instead of this normal hagen does yeah absolutely i just saw that ad and i was like i feel gross and i hate it and i don't know why and i saw this like when i was not pmsing so that was a genuine (laughs) neutral response (laughs) i just think by doing all this marketing they're shooting themselves in the foot (laughs) how was that i'm sorry i have to say I'm like very delighted that you stumbled upon that. And I'm also very delighted that we're almost at the end of this episode because there are so many fewer opportunities for more shooting jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's good you save this for last. Otherwise, the whole the whole show would be full of these. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like the thing that I want to say to close this out is just like totally eat what you want. But please don't conflate marketing with nutritional education. Yes. This is one of those cases where like – a brand is saying, we're good for you for all of these reasons. So our brains go, oh, these things are good. It's good to have right. erythritol. It's good to have stevia. Please, please, please know that the people who are telling you that are trying to sell you erythritol and stevia. <laughs> yes. The purpose of companies is to sell you as much of their product as possible. Right. Anyone who's telling you like this is the best 
probiotic, antibiotic fiber, whatever, they have no incentive to tell you the truth. Right. As you say, Halo Top's job is to make money, and they are doing a bang up job of making money. They are not your source of nutritional education, nor is a fucking GQ story about eating ice cream for 10 days. Like, yes. Please, 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 please. However, if you're really interested in getting a canker sore, now you know where to go. <laughs> <laughs>